Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. For reasons we can't quite explain, the Tigers have struggled this year against the Royals. KC has won 7 of 11 in the season series, yet the Tigers have done some of their best work against the rest of the Central. We'll see how the Tigers do here tonight as they get ready for baseball this evening on a beautiful night here in the Motor City. Welcome to Comerica Park. Game four in this series featuring the Tigers and the Kansas City Royals. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Peppa, Rod Allen, glad to have you with us here for game four in this five-game series. And, Rod, one thing we learned last night in the doubleheader sweep at the hands of the Royals is this Royals team is really coming on now. They're really starting to mature. I'll give you a few reasons why they can really pitch. Second only to the Tigers is their starting staff, and their bullpen is in lockdown mode right now. And then when you add in the pressure they put on you when you're on defense, they have tremendous amount of speed. They steal a lot of bases. They can also defend. This is a very confident team. They run the bases well. They do everything but hit for power. That's why they present problems for the Tigers. All right, now the one guy in their lineup that can hit for power, and we saw that in both games of the doubleheader yesterday is Eric Hosmer, but this kid can do it with the bat and the glove. Absolutely. This is the guy that's playing like he played for me a couple of years ago when he finished in the top five in Rookie of the Year. He didn't get to the big leagues until June. He's got pop the opposite way. He'll also take base hits the other way. And if you hang a breaking ball on your left hander inside, he'll take you 400 feet. He'll also steal your base, and he's got some really soft hands over at first base as well. He's going to win a gold glove. He's going to make all-star teams. He's an outstanding young player. Doug Fisher will need to watch him very closely this evening. All right, after a short break, we'll send you back to the Golf Sam Studios in Shannon Hogan. Coming up tonight, Doug Fisher has his sights set on win number 11 on the season. Fisher and the Tigers take on the Royals next.
Back here at Comerica Park on a gorgeous evening for baseball here in the Motor City. The Tigers Royals getting set to do battle here in game four in this five game series. Doug Fister set to go. And the first pitch of the ball game is ball one to David Lowe, who is the leadoff man tonight for the Royals. Gorgeous night, 76 degrees at game time. Low batting 296. He pops up the next pitch and back out of play it goes. One ball and one strike. Here's the lowdown now on Doug Fister, presented by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. And Doug didn't command his curveball very well last time out. He was throwing too much with his wrist. I was told his wrist needs to be a little bit stiffer. We'll watch for that today and see if he brings out that really good curveball, which has allowed him to have outstanding second half numbers since putting on the Tigers uniform. Two balls, one strike on David Lowe. Doug also throws a lot of ground balls with a good two seam fastball. He'll top out. At about 91 miles an hour, also a really good changeup and a good cut fastball. That one sinks low and in. Three and one now on the Royals leadoff man. We played four games here against the Royals, and they've had three different leadoff hitters. Yes, Carroll, and now David Lowe. And we'll see what Lowe can do here as he tries to reach this start this ball game. Here's the three one, and it's in wow. for a strike. Three and two. David Lowe has hit four home runs this year. Eric Hosmer waiting on deck. He's had a terrific series so far for KC. Really a, a big reason why they've won two of the first three in this series. And a ground ball back up the middle. It finds a hole into center field. David Lowe has a leadoff single to start this one tonight. Here's the rest of the lineup for the Royals presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Lowe, Hosmer, Butler in the top three spots. Alex Gordon batting cleanup and Perez and Moustakis back in the lineup. Bonifacio gets and Escobar rounded out for Ned Yost. Now Eric Hosmer, 5 for 12 in the series. He homered in game one yesterday and he homered in game two. And the ball that he hit in game two was hit a long, long way. Eric Hosmer loving that number two slot because they always have somebody that is leading off that has pretty good speed, which means Hosmer. Is going to get a lot of fastballs to hit, and he really hasn't been missing any of those fastballs since the second half has began. 296 average for Hosmer. And Fister Vitty Raddick here to start this ball game. Two balls, no strikes. David Lowe does have some speed over at first base. He has stolen four. He's only been caught once, but by now you know that Fister's difficult to run on. And so it will be very interesting during the course of this game to see if some of the guys that have been stealing bases at will steal bases here effectively against Doug Fister. Only 15 steals against him since 09. Way out in front, two and one on Eric Hosmer. Good change up there. He knew that Hosmer was looking for the fastball in the 2 0 count, therefore pulled the string on him and had Hosmer fooled and out in front. Hosmer has hit safely in his last four. He's knocked in 59 this year. Now the 2 1 pitch. Hit to right field, base hit. Low will take the turn at second, but hold up as Kelly gets it back in. So back to back singles for KC to start this one. Will somebody tell these Kansas City Royals that this Tigers team, they were the reigning American League champions? Well, they pitched so well in the doubleheader yesterday, they swept it. And now they're coming out swinging the bats here in game four. That ball is about three inches off the plate inside. It's a cut fastball. He kind of crowds Hosmer uh, with the pitch. He doesn't hit it that hard, but still enough uh, to get it past Infante. Now the middle of the lineup coming up as Billy Butler stands in. He is a 323 hitter with men in scoring position. Also a double play waiting to happen. And Billy strike one. has grounded in the 16 double plays this year, which leads their team. And Fister throws a lot of ground balls. So are you feeling number 17? Absolutely. With Fister on the mound, how could you bet against him? Here's the 0-1. Lifted back out of play down the right field line. 0-2 on Billy Butler. Here's what you're talking about in terms of getting the ground balls. The uh, percentage leader, leaders, I should say, in the American League. Porcello was on that list, and so was Doug in the top five. Middle infielders are going to have to get rid of the ball in a hurry once they get it, though, because Hosmer on first base, not being held on, has a huge lead and he has good speed. 
Swing and a miss, and Fister discards Billy Butler. Will be his first strikeout of the ball game. Doug Jones, I mean Jeff Jones, told me before the game today that he expected Doug to have a better breaking ball today, and that was a really good curveball. If Doug Jones were here, he'd probably tell you the same thing. It's my former roommate. I've called Jeff Jones, Doug Jones, about at least ten times this year. <laughs> Josie doesn't care. At least there's one Doug in the building. That would be Mr. Fister. And Mr. Fister now taking on Alex Gordon. And he looks at strike one. But Gordon has been in a tough stretch. He's only two for his last 22, but he remains extremely dangerous. Batting in their cleanup slot has 62 RBIs this year. He also has issues with uh, the Duck Fister. Routed to first, Prince knocks it down. They'll have only one play, and Gordon is out. So advance the runner now with two outs. Might have been a double play ball had he been able to glove it cleanly and get it on its way to Iglesias, but he wants the bobble. Can only get the one out. Now the Royals in search of the two out hit from Salvador Perez. Perez batting in the five slot is one for eight in this series, batting 270. And Fisker throws strike one. Salvador hitting only 270 from a batting average standpoint, but he does a whole lot better with runners in scoring position. 349 for the All Star catcher. Grounded to third, backhanded there by Cabrera. Across the diamond in time, and crisis averted here in the first inning. No runs, two hits, two left. The night off tonight, so Don Kelly is filling in in right field as we scope out the Tigers starting lineup tonight. Presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. You've got Austin Jackson leading it off, and then Don Kelly batting in the second slot. Cabrera fielder to follow, then Victor as well in the middle of the lineup at DH. Andy Dirks in that six hole. Infante Pena Iglesias rounding it out tonight for Detroit. And they are facing the right-handed offerings of Wade Davis. Wade Davis pitched out of the bullpen last year for the Tampa Bay Rays, and his fastball was clocked at 97, 98. He doesn't get that high now uh, as a starting pitcher. Strike one on Jackson. Also features a nice breaking ball, cut fastball, and a changeup every now and then. Wade Davis. A.J. 0 for 5 in the series, batting 261. Sends a ground ball to third on the backhand there, Mustakis. <laughs> One out. Tim Hortons will sponsor the starting Gosh. defensive alignment for the Kansas City Royals this evening in the outfield. It's Gordon uh, Bonifacio and Lowe and Moustakis. He missed the last five games due to calf injury, but when he was taking BP today, told me he felt just fine. Escobar gets up the middle. Hosmer over at first, and Salvador Perez is the catcher. 
Mike Moustakis, a finalist for a gold glove last year, is back in their lineup tonight after spending a few days off with an injury. There's a strike call. How do you go from wearing a boot two days ago <laughs> to playing in a game today? I was wondering that myself. I don't know. Apparently, just precautionary measures. The 0 1 to DK is a ball outside, 1 1. Now Davis ready with the 1 1 pitch. Pulled on the ground and threw base hit into right field. We've been talking a lot about Victor Martinez and rightfully so, second half of the year, but Don Kelly, he just seems to get a couple hits every time he plays. This is why Jim Leland loves him. He can play different positions, infield and outfield, and fill in nicely. He got himself a little fastball at the top of the zone, and he just whistled it right past the second baseman, Chris Getz. Five for eight against Wade Davis. So when Jim Leland looks ahead to figure out when he might give guys days off, you got to believe that he knew that Kelly had good success against Wade. So he picked tonight to give Torrey off. Meanwhile, Hunter hitting only 231 against Davis. Here's Cabrera. Swing and a miss, 0 and 1. Miguel coming in at 358, 38 home runs, and 115 runs driven in. Trying to pick up Kelly at first. We're in the bottom of the first, no score. Miggy takes outside one ball and one strike. And some of you that uh, watched our game last night when James Shields uh, was on the mound for the Kansas City Royals when there was a runner on base. You notice that he takes his stretch and takes a peek at the base runner the same way that Wade Davis does. Actually, Davis got this from James Shields. Really allows you to get a really good look over at first base to see how big that lead is of the base runner. Now the 1 1. Pickoff throw and Perez is known for that. He had five pickoffs last year. There are a few guys that are in the game today that uh, do a lot of that. Yadier, Molina of the Cardinals, and of course Perez both have really good arms, both throw behind the runner quite often. Quick releases. Two balls, one strike on Miguel Cabrera. Ground ball to third, knocked down by Mustakis. Long throw is picked at first by Hosmer on the backhand. Hosmer's got some gold in that glove in the future. We talked about him at the, at the top of the show. He's a really nice two-way player. This ball knocked down by Mustakis. A healthy Cabrera makes this down to first base, and Mustakis would have been given an air. And had it not been for the nifty pick on the other side of Eric Hosmer, he would have been given an air anyway. That is an underappreciated play. Cabrera trying to bust it as hard as he can down the line. Well, Mustak has certainly benefited, benefited from the fact that he's not running all that well these days. Here's Fielder now with two outs. Drives one to center field. Bonifacio over his head. That'll get a run in. Prince on his way to second. He's in with a double. One nothing Detroit. It's another first inning run the Kansas City Royals have given up. They've given up a boatload of first inning runs this year. Bonifacio in center field got fooled on the swing by Prince Fielder. He took off straight across and then he had to take a beeline for the warning track. Even if he would have gotten a good jump, he's not going to make this play. This ball had a lot of backspin on it. Fielder muscles in an RBI. It's his 84th of the year. Quick start tonight for the Tigers, who have been awfully good this year, knocking in runs with two outs. Fister gets some early support. Now Victor. Ball one. Martinez is batting 280, two out of 12 in the series with a double. Davis out of Lake Wales, Florida. Goes 6'5, 230. Miss low again, 2 0 the count. We have mentioned how good this Royals 
rotation and bullpen really pitching staff as a whole has been this year. But in the first inning. It's amazing how good they've been except the first. Where they've now given up 77 runs. 22 of those by the guy we just showed there James Shields who pitched a really good game last night against Detroit. Royals team ERA is three four seven best in the American League. Three balls no strikes. Andy Dirks waiting on deck Tigers have a one nothing lead on the fielder RBI double. See what Victor does here on 3 0. He will take it and it's down the middle of strike. 3 and 1. Did you like hitting 3 0 when you played? I didn't mind it. I was looking for one pitch in one area, and anything other than that one pitch, I didn't swing. And there are a lot of guys that aren't disciplined enough to do that, and that's the reason why some guys don't like to swing 3 0 because they're looking for a fastball, and they swing at the fastball no matter where it's at. There's a base hit in the left center field. Here comes Chris rounding third. Gordon fires it back in. It's not in time. And up the line, it is an RBI single for Victor Martinez. 2 nothing Detroit. Back to back hits. One double the opposite way, the single the opposite way by Victor Martinez. Real nice concentration, simply taking uh, what's given to him. You see the shortstop, Escobar, he was playing up the middle, which vacated the hole where he should have been playing. And Prince Fielder able to come home and score the second run of the inning. I recall you saying at the end of the doubleheader sweep last night that it didn't matter. The Tigers would come out and play with some energy today. No doubt. I mean, this is a big league team, and it's a really good team. It's a team that has a lot of swagger. And yesterday, you just have to tip your cap to the Kansas City Royals. They outplayed Detroit. There's a strike called on Dirks. A whole lot of people jumping ship on Twitter, though. <laughs> and that stuns you, I'm sure. Jumping ship. I don't have enough lifeboats for all them folks. <laughs> Maybe you should hand out some anchors. <laughs> Here's the 0 1 pitch. Line drive, and it's caught at second base by Getz. That'll end the inning. But it's a good start for Detroit. They get two runs, they do it on three hits. Prince doubling in a run. Martinez singles in another. They take a 2-0 lead. Now we go to the top half of the second. Let's take a peek at the Tigers starting defense. It's presented by Beaumont Health System. Dirks, Jackson, Don Kelly in the outfield. Miggy, Iglesias, Infante, and the Prince in the infield. And Brian Pena, uh, he is the catcher behind the plate tonight. 
There's Mike Moustakis who leads it off for the Royals. It'll be Moustakis, Bonifacio, and Getz facing left-hander Doug Fister, who gave up two singles to start first with no damage. That slides low and in, and the count is one ball and one strike. The splits on Moustakis are quite telling. 286 since June 9th. And he looks at a strike. So that's two left-handed batters that really perked up when uh, George Brett came downstairs for uh, the two months that he was their hitting instructor. Moustakis and both Hosmer, a couple of left-handers, really started to swing the bat a lot better. As was George Brett in his Hall of Fame career. One ball, two strikes. Moustakis. Had a calf problem, a calf injury, which kept him out of the lineup. Since last Monday, there's Hosmer who has really heated up. And missed inside. Two balls, two strikes. Doug's got that real good cut fastball today, but he continues to miss inside off the plate to the left handers, and they continue to take that pitch. Here's the 2 2. Off the end of the bat, Pena will come out to make the play. Oh, he threw it away. Moustakis will head to second base and pull in there. You can see that Moustakis is not healthy right now, and Pena probably had more time uh, than he thought he had when he called off Doug Fister. He's going to get out from behind the plate. He's going to discard the mask. He's going to call Fister off, and then he just throws from that sidearm angle and airmails Prince Fielder. And you can see Moustakis still not 100%, but there's really no player uh, on the field right now that's 100% on August 17th. Single for Moustakis E2 allows him to reach second. So nobody out here is Emilio Bonifacio. Two for ten in the series, a double and an RBI for Bonifacio. And he lifts one in the air to straightaway center right at Jackson, and that is going to be very helpful for the Tigers. One gone. Moustakis is not advanced. Bring up Chris Getz. Two twenty four for Getz, who has also spent some time injured. Knee sprain off the DL on Monday for the Royals. And that is in for a strike, going one. Bunted straight back to the screen. No balls, two strikes. Getz did that yesterday. Yeah, bunting toward Santiago at the time. And he was rewarded with a base hit. He bunted the ball right past Jose Alvarez, who started uh, the night game last night. Now Fister ready with the 0 2. Gets again slicing it back of the screen. Now Fister a check of the runner and a breaking ball bounce back to the mound. Mustak is caught between second and third. He'll get in a rundown. Cabrera will tag him out, and he will just simply switch spots with the much more speedy Chris Getz. If you are the Kansas City Royals, you prefer to have Getz on second base instead of Moustakis. And Moustakis clearly stayed in the rundown long enough uh, to allow Getz to get himself in the scoring position. Job well done by the Kansas City Royals. One five six five on the put out. Gets at second. He's going to bring up Alcides Escobar. More importantly, though, a chance now for Fister to strand another runner with two outs. Escobar struggling right now. Alcides had a 10 game hitting streak, but since that was snapped a couple of days ago, he's 0 for 16. Streaky, I guess, is the best way to describe the season that Escobar has had. He has had a couple of long, difficult stretches. 
Now the 0 1. 0 and 2 on Escobar. Didn't like that call. Now he's going to step out shaking his head. Fister, as we know by now, works at a very brisk pace. Here's the 0 2. Lifted foul down the right field line. Royals got runners at first and second in the first, but didn't score. They got a leadoff man to second base here in the second, and they're trying to strand him. And that Yost saw his team put up some good fight yesterday in sweeping the doubleheader, leaving the Royals six and a half out. Round ball to short. Here is Iglesias. And the struggles continue for Escobar. No runs, a hit, an air, and one man left. I'll bring a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow, and you will get yourself a free small order of curly fries. Tigers did not have one yet, however, they got two runs in the first inning. Fielder and Martinez driving in runs. Omar Infante backs out on a fastball in from Wade Davis. Infante Pena Iglesias, the bottom three in the Tigers lineup tonight. 1 0 from Davis is pounded in the air toward right. Heading to the seats and out of play. Well, Omar has, for the most part, owned Wade Davis 5 for 9. Drives one to left center field, base hit. Six for ten. Love him. Never seen a fastball he didn't like. Will be the fourth Tigers hit of the game. We'll bring up Brian Pena now. Well, Pena just continues to swing it here in the month of August. He has three hits in this series, and in August is batting 444. A strike called on the outer edge. One home run, three RBIs as well this month. And a ball low. One ball and one strike. Pena was stirring it up in the clubhouse before the game. Victor Martinez had 
his favorite music on and Pena went to the uh, boom box and switched it. And started doing what I guess you would consider as a dance. But it was odd looking. What he switched the music to. Yeah, I can't remember. I, I don't remember what the tune was, but it was uh, much slower than uh, the stuff Victor had on. That bounces away from Perez, who can't find it. Infante will hold it second. Wild pitch. As a catcher, when you call for a fastball, you're not really thinking you have to get down and block it. And therefore, he goes over, backhands it because he can't get over in front of it. And it took a while before he could find it. And Infante now in scoring position. Pena has a lot of fun. Even when he's not playing, sitting on the bench. Every time we take a shot of him, he's got a huge smile on his face and he's always uh, stirring it up. Keeps it really loose. And he does that as well in the clubhouse. It's always fun to be around him. And there is value to that. I've always believed that. He's gotten a chance to play quite a bit now and has taken advantage of it. Here's the 2 1. You'll watch that one in the glove. Three and one on Pena. There were a lot of people that uh, told me last year that were hanging out in the clubhouses during the course of the World Series, and they said the Giants' clubhouse was a lot looser other than the Tigers' game, uh, clubhouse. And this was after Game One. It's not like they were down 3-0 after Game One. They made those comments, but with Hunter and now Brian Pena in that clubhouse, that Tigers' clubhouse, pretty loose too. A strike called. Pena was about to discard the bat. Three and two. Borderline. Close enough. Full count. Tigers have a runner at second and nobody out. They lead two nothing here in the second inning. And Brian Payne has got to get something he can pull to get Infante at least over the third base. Bouncing ball, second base. Mission accomplished. Pena's out, advance the runner. That's the way you play the game. Bring up Iglesias. Well, the Royals got the leadoff man to second in the top of this inning, but Bonifacio fly to center, did not advance the runner. They didn't score. The Tigers get the job done by advancing the runner. We'll see if Iglesias can knock him on. Infield in all the way around for the Royals. And it's low ball one. Wise decision here yeah, by Ned Yost, the manager of the Kansas City Royals, can't fall behind any further uh, to the Tigers, not with Fister on the mound, and not the way that Doug Fister uh, has pitched the second half of the season the last couple of years. He's been one of the best in baseball. Now the 1 0 from Davis. The breaking pitch. It's in for a strike 1 1. Iglesias trying to knock this run in. He's got Infante at third base. Over his last 13, this would be a nice spot to break that stretch. Leads all rookies in hits and multi hit games. And a squeeze, and it's butted, and this will get the job done. Iglesias is safe at first base. Perfectly executed by Iglesias and Infante. The first squeeze of the year, you can see Infante on third base. He takes off as soon as Davis picks up the leg, and, and, and Glazius just gets the ball down. And because he gets it down in a perfect spot, not only does he get himself an RBI, but he gets his 28th infield single of this season. Very nicely done by Glazius. That is the first Tiger squeeze of the year. And Cabrera approves. There's a foul by Jackson. Well, We've talked about the fact that Johnny Peralta certainly provided the Tigers with a lot of power and a steady shortstop, but Iglesias gives you a lot of energy. He beat that play out, the ability to handle the bat a little bit, and that has charged up the crowd a tad here. Now Leland had the courage to call it, and it worked. 3 nothing Detroit.
Jackson checks his swing, snap throw back, and Iglesias back in standing up. Iglesias took about four or five hard steps towards second base like he was going to steal. And that is very dangerous with Salvador Perez behind the plate. He has a gun uh, at that catcher's position. Iglesias has stolen three out of four this year. There he goes. Foul back out of play. Jim is uh, matching the energy uh, so far this evening of the Kansas City Royals. The Royals run a lot. They sacrifice a lot. They run the bases very aggressively. Therefore, Jim knew he had to be aggressive tonight if his team was going to beat this Kansas City uh, group, which is pretty much uh, on the Tigers this year. You know, Leland said as soon as they got Iglesias that he might have to adjust his style a bit to Iglesias' skills, and this may be uh, an example of that. Here's the one two runner holding, and it's fouled back out of play. One and two, the count stays on Austin Jackson. Iglesias executes the squeeze play. He was on the run on the last pitch, in the previous pitch. Don Kelly waiting on deck. Tigers got two in the first, one more here in the second. RBIs in this game for Fielder, Martinez, and Iglesias. Low, two and two. Jackson is 0 for 6 in the series. Really hadn't had much success over the past couple of years against Wade Davis. Now, 1 for 12 against Davis. Into the glove on a foul tip for strike three. First strike out of the ball game for Davis. There are two gone now. And it brings up Don Kelly. Kelly struggled early on this season. Through May 31st, he was hitting just 176. But since the start of June, he's been over 300. 310 to be exact. And it floats in for strike one. Meanwhile, Kelly has played several different positions. And tonight they got him in right field. Here are those numbers since June 1st. Pretty good. Now the 0 1. Ball high, one ball, one strike. Checked it and it's low. Run the count to two and one. Kelly had a single scorer run in the first inning. Now five for eight against Davis. Popped up foul. This will get back into the seats two and two. Talking about this Wade Davis knee bend that he learned from Jane Shield, it seems to me and that would expend a lot more energy. As far as uh, when he's delivering the ball home or well, just, just the getting himself bend. set? Yeah, just getting himself set. Doing the knee bend, coming up. Maybe they're doing it for style. Here's the 2 2. They've been known to do that up here, you know. <laughs> as long as you look good, right? Exactly. <laughs> His big game James who pitched a really good game in last night's contest seven innings. He walked four but pitched around him. Only three hits allowed. Walk four and hit one. Yeah. Again the two two. Round ball foul down the first baseline. 
So Davis has thrown quite a few in this inning. He's up to 41 pitches. Tigers on top, three nothing early in this one, two in the first, one here in the second. Another huge crowd here at the ballpark tonight. Throw back and Iglesias back in standing up. There's about 100,000 people downtown tonight. That Kenny Chesney concert uh, is about to start across the street over at Ford Field. So there are people everywhere. Uh, downtown is certainly filled tonight. It is hopping. Meanwhile, Iglesias is drawing quite a few throws from Wade Davis. We usually don't see this. Usually, Tigers do not draw a lot of attention when they get there. Uh, runners on first base. Even Jackson, who could speed and doesn't get a lot of attention, who could run, excuse me, doesn't get a lot of attention. Well, I, I think many would agree that when you start dividing your attention, it certainly is to the benefit of the hitter. Absolutely. And Iglesias is drawing a lot of looks from Davis. Meanwhile, Kelly is giving Davis fits by fouling off pitch after pitch. Bounce again. Perez able to block it. Now it's three and two, and that means Iglesias will be on the move here with two outs. Donnie finds a gap here. Iglesias scores easily. And I'm sure Davis doesn't want to deal with Cabrera. Runner goes. And it's driven deep to right field. It's going to go foul. Just ahead of that pitch. Sigh of relief for Davis. This ball went a long way. Albeit foul. And Don knew it immediately. Hit it hard, but he pulled it. He was admiring it, though. You see him? <laughs> Why not? You hit them that far. You got to see how far they go. Checked it, and it's ball four, and that's going to put two aboard. So Kelly on twice in this game, and it's going to keep the inning going for Miguel Cabrera. Right now, Ned Yost, the man of the Kansas City Royals, thinking this game can get away from us right here with the big guy standing in the batter's box and all the damage uh, he has done with two outs and runners in scoring position. That would be 438 to be exact. Eight home runs. And he looks at strike one. Miguel hit a ball to third base, then Mustakis was able to make a, a play on, a tough play on. Now the 0 1. Scooped up there by Perez. One ball, one strike. Stock is helped out by Hosmer on that ground ball by Miggy in the first inning. He threw it in the dirt. Hosmer with a backhanded scoop. As the numbers now start to pile up, 30th pitch of the inning coming. 47 total for Wade Davis. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Inside, two balls and one strike. Best fastball of the evening out of the hand of Davis at 95 miles an hour. When he was pitching out of the bullpen last year for Tampa, he had a great year out of that bullpen. And for the Rays, his fastball was clocked regularly at 97. That was the transition year for him from the rotation. Little pop up to the second baseman. Gets will haul it in to retire the side. However, the Tigers 
Yet another run, a squeeze by Iglesias, and Fonte scores. Tigers baseball tonight is presented by Bell Tire. Across the field, of course, at Ford Field, Kenny Chesney is in concert, and so there are a lot of folks milling around. And uh, what a big night here in the Motor City! One of the biggest of the summer. Dream Cruise going on as well. Rod, you have your car in the Dream Cruise? I did not. No, I did not. Perfect weather for uh, all the festivities as well. Can't ask for a better night. 76 right now. As David Lowe leads it off. We're in the top of the third. Doug Fister has gone first pitch strike on eight of ten to start this ball game. Here's the 0 1 2 low and a chopper to first right at Prince. Here is uh, today's high speed stat and is brought to you as always by Charter Internet. In the last 26 games, Tiger starters, uh, they lead the American League and wins actually. They pace the major leagues in wins with 16 of uh, the best earned run average. They're getting a lot of run support. And their whip is second, and the bonus batting average is second. That is a really nice remedy for a lot of success, which they've enjoyed. There's a ball outside to Eric Hosmer. It starts with the pitching staff. And the Tigers staff has been one of the best in all of baseball this year. Fister tonight is in search of his 11th win. Doug 10 and 6 coming in with an ERA of 3 6. Here's the 2 0, and it's in for a strike. 2 and 1 on Hosmer. Singled back in the first and now has 6 hits in just 13 at bats in the series. Way inside. 3 and 1. You really have to crowd Hosmer inside the majority of the hits that he has gotten with the exception of the home run of the hit to right field yesterday against Jose Alvarez. Everything else has been hit to left field. Here's a 3 1 pitch and he lost him so Hosmer is on again. One on one out time for a game break. We check in with Trevor Thompson. Trev, thanks. Here the Tigers got a couple in the first, one in the second. They lead three nothing. Billy Butler fouls it off 0 1. Fister just issued his first walk of the game. 
Doug walked three in his last start and really when you look at his uh, body of work this year of all the starts he's made and tonight is number 25. He has walked three just twice. The ground ball back up the middle into center. Two on for the Royals and one out. So Butler is on. We'll bring up Gordon. Ground out to first is only time up. And Gordon now two for his last 23. Whistled back out of play on one. Doug Fister throwing so many first pitch strikes. A lot of these Kansas City Royals have gone up there very aggressive on uh, the first pitch from Doug, whether it be a cut fastball inside, a four seamer, or a curve. It doesn't really matter what the pitch is, they're just swinging. 10 of 13 on the first pitch strikes. The 0 1. Got it on his hands that time, 0 and 2. Three eleven this year for Alex Gordon with men in scoring position. He's also recorded 10 outfield assists this year, which is tied for the most among outfielders. I'm surprised teams still run on him. I mean, his reputation is pretty good. He has developed that reputation over the past couple of years. A couple of gold gloves. How much of that gold glove do you think is based on the assist category? I think a lot of it is. And a lot of it's his help because he played third base. He has a quick release. He doesn't have a great arm from left field, but his release and his footwork is so good because he's a natural infielder. Pulled on the ground and threw. Base hit. Hosmer to third. They're going to send him home. Kelly thought about coming to the plate, but thought better of it. It's an RBI single for Alex Gordon. And we're going to make that our bell tire pitch by pitch. The one way that they've been able to get Alex Gordon out really the entire year has been to really crowd him with fastballs inside. And then ultimately, what you want to do is you want to throw him that changeup to see if you can get him out. This time, he's waiting on the changeup and he stays back long enough to hit it right past Prince Field. Give Alex Gordon some credit because that's the same pitch they've been getting him out with all year long. 63rd RBI now for Gordon. Royals are on the board three to one and still batting with a couple of runners on here. And Doug Fister with one out obviously looking for the ground ball and nearly 70% of his outs this year have come uh, via the ground ball. And Perez grounded out his first time up. Two on one out. And a run in and a bender that missed inside. One ball, one strike. A little bit in. Had the knees of Perez buckling. Low and away. Two and one the count. Right handed batters this year came in hitting 299 against Doug Fister. And a bouncing ball, but it's going to get through back up the middle into center field. Here comes Butler rounding third. He'll score. It's an RBI hit for. Salvador Perez in a three to two ball game. Three straight hits after the walk to Hosmer. He's getting the ground balls, but they're just finding some holes. Gordon hit one on the other side that got past Prince Fielder, and now Gordon, excuse me, Perez, one up the box uh, that gets past Iglesias. And the Royals now have six hits and they're down by a run still only one out for Mike Moustakis. Now you have to watch Gordon out at second base. He is eight of twelve in steals of third base uh, in his big league career. And for a strike 0 and 1 and right now Iglesias is really giving him too much room at that po uh, position because Infante on the other side is well off second base. Doug just threw his 50th pitch of this game.
Here's the 0 1. 0 oh 2 on Mustakis. FYI, if Gordon does take off for third base and try to steal, and Brian Pena more than likely will throw down to second base to try to nab Perez, the catcher, if he is trying to sneak in on the backside of the stolen base. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Mustakis is out and a strikeout for Doug. Will be his second of the game. Two gone. He's got a really good curveball today. We've already seen him throw about four or five of them. All of them have really good depth to him, and he hasn't left any of them up over the heart of the plate. Here is Emilio Bonifacio. Who fly to center field in the second. And Bonifacio takes a strike. Yet another first pitch strike from Fister. 216 average this year for Bonifacio. Started the season with Toronto. And uh, just days ago was traded to the Royals. One and one. Two and one on Bonifacio. This is the seventh man that Fister is facing here in the third. And their rally all started with a one out walk to Hosmer. RBI hits by Gordon and Perez. Chris Getz is waiting on deck. In for a strike. Two and two on Bonifacio. A couple of years ago had a really big season with the Marlins, the then Florida Marlins, stole 40 bases. Did nearly 300. Kansas City hoping that uh, that's the Bonifacio that they uh, acquired from the Toronto Blue Jays. Regardless, he will give them some energy and already has. Grounded foul right at home plate. I knew he could run, but when he got that uh, double last night and uh, he ran all the way to third base, but he had to go back to second base because the ball got stuck in the corner. He could fly. Yeah, I didn't realize how quickly he could run because obviously he was a National League player for most of his career early on. But he can really move. 2 2 again. Lifted to center field. Jackson coming over to end the inning. That'll be it for the Royals. They get two runs, they lead two.
Factor to run. They don't do this very often. They got a base hit. Infante got down to second base on the wild pitch. And Brian Pena on the 3-2 count. He just hit a ground ball to second base, which got Infante to third. And then the first squeeze play of the season executed beautifully by Iglesias. And not only does he get an RBI, but he also gets an infield single. And so Prince Fielder starts it off. The Royals have come back with two runs of their own. Fielder is able to knock one in with a double in the first inning. He'll be followed by Martinez and then Dirks. Here's the 1 0 pitch. And it dives in for a strike. Good breaking ball there by Davis. The majority of his breaking balls are curveball variety. No slider. He's got a cutter. Kind of acts like a slider on occasion. One and two. Davis made his last start and went six innings, allowing two runs against Miami. It was his first start in 10 days. He was out with the passing of his stepbrother. So Davis has had to deal with some uh, personal tragedy in his life. He was able to come back in that start and get through it. This is his second start since coming back. Here's the one two offering. And a ball that just missed outside 2 2. It's a great point because uh, even though these guys uh, make good money and they put on a performance every single night, they do have you know, tragedies in their own personal lives every now and then. And a little looper and left and caught on a slide by Gordon. One out. Yeah, but sometimes we don't take into account some of the things that they have to go through personally. When they get on the field for the three hours, they're able to put all that behind them, though. But as soon as the game's over, it's right on their mind again. Nice play by Gordon, who has won a couple gold gloves. We got Victor Martinez. Single RBI in the first inning for Victor. And he takes a strike 0 and 1. Martinez really for the most part has been handled by KC pitching this year when you're wondering or if you're wondering why the Tigers have struggled against the Royals the Royals pitching has done a pretty good job against the middle of the Tigers lineup. Cabrera has been in the 260 range. They've handled fielder well Prince came in batting just 195 against KC this year. And Martinez a little bit over 200. So they have neutralized the middle, which is the potent part of that Tigers lineup. Tonight it's been different, though. They've gotten a couple of RBIs from the middle. The Tigers have the best starting staff in all of baseball, as far as I'm concerned. And this Kansas City Royals, they're in that conversation, second or third in baseball. They can pitch. And that's the reason why they can shut down some big bats in the middle of the batting order. Now the one two fouled off. But it's the table setters that they struggle with. The guys that just try to put the ball in play. AL team leaders earn run average. There you go. I'll tell you what. We knew Shields was good. He probably was going to pitch well yesterday. But Danny Duffy was off it. He's got electric stuff. He was wild. Effectively wild. But next year he'll be a couple of years removed from that Tommy John surgery. And uh, I was impressed with Danny Duffy yesterday. Orlander pitched a great game. Jose Alvarez, who went back to Toledo, also did good work in his spot start. Down ball to short. Escobar right there. And Victor is retired, two gone. Fans, as always, you can vote for your Tigers. McDonald's player of the game. Presented by the Detroit Tigers, Eminem McFlurry, only at McDonald's. Using your cell phone, text Tigers, then a space, then the player's uniform number to 37338, or vote online at FoxForceDetroit.com. Doug Fister was staked to a 3 0 lead. Royals had come back with a two spot. Andy Dirks lined out his first time up. And he's starting to hit the ball a lot better. That four hit game in game one in the series. 2-0 the count.
Bounce again. Three balls, no strikes. Well, going forward, it certainly will be critical whether it's Dirks or anybody else in that sixth spot in the lineup to pick it up a little bit because really the Tigers have seen some dip in production in that spot. Their number six hitter is hitting just above 200 since Johnny Peralta was suspended. So they're struggling there. He was hitting 300. He's a two out walk. Second walk for Davis. Hey, the Tigers close out this series with the Royals tomorrow. It's a 108 start here at the ballpark. And you know what? It's also Sunday Kids Day. All kids 14 and under receive a back to school pencil set. Call 866 66 Tiger or visit Tigers.com. Max Scherzer will tow the slab tomorrow for the Tigers. And it's in for a strike. Andy Dirks will still a base. And it's uh, a possibility that he might take off with two outs. Seven of eight. Infante had a single back in the second. Ball low to Omar 1 1. The catcher Perez throws so well behind the plate. We've well documented that. What you have to do if you're a base runner in your dirt, you have to anticipate possibly a breaking ball count to run in. Which could be right here because we all know Omar is a great fastball hitter. Steps away and looks at a strike one and two. Wade Davis, former third round pick of the Tampa Bay Rays back in 2004. Part of that big deal that brought him over along with Shields. The Will Myers deal. And the one two. Two and two. It's been so long ago that he was actually drafted by the Devil Rays at that time. When he was traded, they were the Rays, which was last December. And the 2 2. Line drive, base hit left field. How about Infante? Another hit for Omar. He came in hitting over 400 against the Royals this year. Omar did a very nice job of laying off the previous two pitches, which were breaking balls. He got the fastball at 91 at the bottom of the zone. He didn't overswing. Really nice to balance the approach by Infante and clobbers another fastball. So here's Brian Pena. Ground out his first time up. Pena chance to drive in a two out run. I like Pena's new walk up song. I wasn't paying attention. What was it? Blurred lines. One ball, no strikes. It's pretty peppy, isn't it? It is. It's a hot song right now. Might be the one of the number one songs in the country. Here's the 1 0. And it's a strike on the outer edge, 1 1. Didn't have walk up songs when you played, did they? They did not. Although in Japan we had them. Really? Yeah, we did. Did you get to pick them or did they? No, no, they had them for us. And it was the same song on the road and at home. No kidding. Yep. Your fans traveled on the road or whoever the fans were on the road, they didn't necessarily have to be from the team that you were from. They have fans everywhere for every Japanese team, and they have that same walk up song for you, whether it be at home or the road. Two and one. Foul back. I got a good walk up song for you when your days in Japan running on empty after you chase that guy down to the center field wall. Yeah, I was running on fumes. I was done, man. I had a good day that day. I mean, I like hit a home run. I had a couple of doubles, scored on a single. I mean, I was running all over the ballpark that day. So you were gassed already. Yeah, and that was like the eighth or ninth inning, too, when I chased that guy to left center field. <laughs> Two and two the count. And it's fouled back out of play. We rode the bullet train home that night because 
And it was quick. I mean, it was like a real short flight from Tokyo to Hiroshima where I played. And the bullet train would take like four hours. So you get on it and you just kind of cruise. And I was cramping up the whole ride home. <laughs> <laughs> I had sweated so much during the game. I mean, I had leg cramp, you know, quad cramp. I just cramped up the whole way home. Chasing a guy out the center field, you know, all that stuff. Three and two. And Brian Pena. Now the Tigers trying to add some more here. They are up three to two in the bottom of the third. Base runners will get a chance to get a head start here, which is really important, especially if there's base hit to left field, where Alex Gordon, as we've told you, can really. Uh, throw from that position. There they go. And a ground ball to first base. Hosmer has been automatic there, and that'll end the threat. Tigers get a walk, a single strand two. We go to the fourth. Miguel Tejada, the Royals' second baseman, has been suspended for 105 games after twice testing positive for amphetamines. Third longest suspension in Major League Baseball history. Wow. He performed well for the uh, uh, Kansas City Royals. Uh, Tejada's been in baseball for a long, long time. He provided some energy. And he was nice in the clubhouse. Performed good for him, but unfortunately, he's gotten in a little bit of trouble. Former MVP. Miguel Tejada. First, Ned Yost has uh, stocked up on some second baseman, acquiring Jamie Carroll and uh, Bonifacio. They can play that position. Yeah, they must have known the suspension was coming down, and that's one of the reasons why they went out to get some help. Here is Chris Getz. He'll be followed by Escobar and then low. There's a ball outside. 1 1 the count on Getz. Fisker allowed two runs back in the third. RBI singles by Gordon and Perez. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Little floater over the head of the shortstop into left field. Base hit. Gets aboard with a leadoff single. We'll see if Getz wants to steal a base here. We've talked about the Royals and how many bases they've stole as a team. Here's that AT&T trivia question tonight. Who are the only three Michigan-born active players to have at least 100 career hits? Actives, that's the key word. Three Michigan born active players to have at least 100 career hits. Hmm. Chris Getz is aboard with a single. Here's Escobar. Runner was on the move and is fouled back out of play. Ned Yost knows that Doug Fister tough to run on, so therefore put that hit and run on instead of allowing Getz to try to steal his 12th base of the year.
was talking to uh, Jeff Jones about this Kansas City Royals uh, team and the fact that they run so much and they could really put pressure uh, on your pitchers. He told me, he says, I know they're going to run. We know they're going to run. We know their success rate is pretty good. He says, so therefore, for him, I'd rather for my pitcher to make a quality pitch when he decides to throw the ball home versus giving that base runner too much attention. Quick throw back to the bag gets back in there. In other words he was saying I don't mind if they steal because I feel like our pitchers even if they're in scoring position they have a proven track record of making a quality pitch to get themselves out of that jam. Well, if you looked at the doubleheader yesterday it was a couple of home runs by Hosmer that uh, hurt them and an RBI double by Bonifacio there wasn't a whole lot of scoring so the, the base running really didn't affect yesterday's doubleheader all that much. But it is certainly a huge part of their game. Now the 1 1. Ball high. Two balls, one strike. The base running does affect the pitches that they throw. And when guys like Hosmer play long ball, a lot of times it's because they do have a guy on base that has a lot of speed and they're paying way too much attention to him. They rush their delivery, therefore, they don't make the necessary pitches. That they would want to make. So that's how base running does come into play. That's a good point. And do you feel it as well? It uh, not only affects how you may rush a pitch, but the pitch selection as well? I don't know if it's so much the pitch selection, but I know guys rush, whether it be their fastball or their curveball. And uh, we just saw an example yesterday of a couple hanging breaking balls. He was on the move again. Gets will go back. And we showed you how many steals they have as a team. They lead the American League. They have stolen five bases in the series. Even their first baseman runs. Bonifacio has a couple. Getz has one. Hosmer has one. So when they get on, they're just absolutely fearless. They go. Two and two. Gets shuffling off the bag at first, and now Fister will step off. Gets has already taken off twice. Escobar bounced out his first time. And that's going to get away from Pena. Gets. What's going on here? Pena doesn't even know where the ball is. And Gets is getting all the way to third. What is Pena saying? Well, he, it wasn't fouled off, was it? He didn't swing. Pena never moved. Now, time called by Mike Muchlinski, the home plate umpire. Pena perhaps saying that it hit his bat. That's why he didn't move. We'll see. The umpires are going to convene now and try and get this right. Muchlinski is the home plate umpire. This will be a big call in this game. Well, here's a play right here if they do not reverse it, and it appears that they're not going to reverse it. We'll see. That they may review next year once they implement. Oh, it did hit his bat. The replay. Yes, it did. It hit the ground first, but then it hit his bat. Oh, my goodness. Again, here's the uh, proposed Major League Baseball replay review. Managers would be allowed to have. Three challenges next year. The first coming in the first six innings, and then two from the seventh inning and beyond. But that clearly hit his bat. Well, Jim knows that now. So someone has told Jim that it did indeed make contact with the bat, and that's why he's very upset. Yeah, he clearly he went out calm and collected at the beginning, but after he was informed that it hit his bat, that wasn't even close. And you could tell by the reaction by Pena that you knew it had to hit something. So now Getz takes third base. Oh, is he hot? The tying run gets all the way to third. Here comes Bob Davidson. He's thrown him out. Bob Davidson, the umpire at first base. Did he throw him out? He did. Oh, my goodness. Now Leland's going to come out. Uh, the skipper's going to go at it now with Muschlinski.
And this sellout crowd is going to be entertained right now. This is as heated as we have seen Leland in a long time face to face with Bob Davidson. Clearly the reaction of Brian Pena who was behind the plate had to give you some clue that it didn't just get by him. That is a perfect example of next year once the replay is implemented. This would get overturned. Look at that clearly changed directions. So those of you that do not think the replay system is not a good idea. There you go. Well, but I, I'm not sure how to play like this would be reviewable right now. I think what they're looking at is plays down the line and trap balls. But you're, you're right. I mean a play like this would certainly be a great candidate to be reviewed. So that particular situation will not be able to review next year. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I think right now they're concentrating on plays down the line and trap balls in the outfield. Well, they need to include that one. Then. That clearly would have been overturned. And so the skipper has been tossed out. He will hand over his lineup card to Gene Lamont, who now assumes the duties. Nobody out runner at third. Round ball fair inside the bag that'll get a run in. Escobar drives in a run with a double down the left field line. And it's a 3 3 game. So I guess you're calling that a wild pitch, right? Yeah, a wild pitch. Now Pena getting into it with Muschlinski. No, he's gone too. He just oh threw him out. Well, they're dropping like flies now. Well, Pena's hot, Leland's hot. They've both been ejected. This is not good. Wouldn't you be able to hear the bat, the ball hit the bat? You would think. I mean, I. I'm not going to sit here and think it's easy to umpire, especially home plate, but you would think you'd be able to hear that ball hit the bat. But maybe not. So Escobar gets an RBI double. Tigers are without their manager and their catcher. And right now, the entire umpiring crew, they have an idea that they missed that call. Oh, there's no question. Because of the reaction of the Tigers right now, Jim Leland and Brian Pena. And when they get a chance to go look at it, they'll know that they missed that call. So Brian Holiday now will put the equipment on and he will head behind the plate. Yet I guess another example of how instant replay certainly could impact the game if they decide to go uh, that deep into different situations and there's pain being taught. He tried to do it in a very professional way. He wasn't looking at the home plate on part. He was kind of looking out toward uh, the pitcher's mound, but he must have said the magic words. <laughs> yeah, he used the right words, doesn't matter where you're looking. He had a little bob and weaving going with his head, too. So, Brian Holiday, loosening up, did not expect to be coming into the game at this point. And he is good to go. In the meantime, the Royals have tied this. Pena's reaction when he went down. The mild mannered, always smiling Brian Pena, certainly upset at being tossed out. So the Royals now have some momentum going. They've tied this game. They have a runner at second. Holiday comes in behind the plate. Still nobody out. There's a show of bunts by David Lowe. Lowe is single and a ground out. And now he wants time. He'll go talk to Eddie Rodriguez.
Jim Leland has been ejected. Brian Pena has been ejected. Royals have tied the game here in the fourth. And a ball inside. Two balls, no strikes. A pitch in the dirt clearly hit the dirt and then the bat of Escobar. But they ruled it a wild pitch. Gets went all the way to third, then eventually scored. That is popped up foul back out of play. Now, if you're Doug Fister, I mean, it's you've got to kind of force yourself to uh, regroup here and uh, refocus. No doubt, the entire team has to do that. Gene Lamont taking over now as the skipper of this one. Two and one, the count. Popped up right side of the infield, Prince. Foul ground. One gone. Escobar planted at second base. He could not move. Yeah, you wonder if the Tigers might be entertaining the thought of putting Hosmer on first base and then see if they can get Billy Butler to hit it to a double play. The way Hosmer has been going in this series might not be a bad idea. Single walk in this game, run score. Six hits. It looks like they're going to pitch to him. You have to watch Escobar out at second base. He has stolen third base 20 times in his major league career. He's only been caught once. He is 20 of 21. Way outside 1 0. And regardless of whether there's a right handed batter or a left handed batter, if you give him too much room, he'll take off. He is 14 of 14 in steals this year. He hasn't been thrown out yet this year. It's August 17. Fister ready with the 1-0. And a breaking ball misses. Two balls, no strikes. It looks like they're pitching around Hosmer. On the outer edge. Hosmer 59 RBIs this year. Homered in both games in the doubleheader yesterday. And he's waiting on a 2 1. Way outside, 3 and 1. Butler waiting on deck. In there, a strike, 3 and 2. So Hosmer is aboard for the third time in the game. Put runners at first and second. We remind you to join us again tomorrow. The Tigers wrapping up this series with the Royals. Coverage begins at noon with Tigers Live, that is Tigers Royals, tomorrow right here on Fox Sports Detroit. And Max Scherzer will take his turn on the hill. It'll be the final game of this five game series. Scherzer against lefty Bruce Chen. Jeff Jones out now to have a chat with Fister. But Billy Butler will stand in here and uh, 16 grounded into double plays this year is among the highest in the American League. Prince and Pujols have each knocked into 18 twin killings. And right now, Fister could use a ground ball. He's got Escobar at second base and Hosmer at first. 3 3 ball game in the fourth. There's a ground ball to second. Infante, Iglesias, and a double play. A thing of beauty. Number 17 for Billy Butler. 4-6-3 in an inning in which the Tigers lose their catcher and their skipper. The Royals will settle for one.
Cut is brought to you by Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. Ram Trucks now get a great summer deal on a Ram truck at the Ram Summer Clearance Event. And by Lando Frost, great tasting lunch meat. It is the Woodward Dream Cruise. These shots taken in uh, beautiful downtown Birmingham, Michigan. All the cars on display in this yearly event here in the Motor City. Here at Comerica, it is a 3 3 game as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning, and Wade Davis goes back to the hill facing Jose Iglesias. The 3 0 Tiger lead has disappeared. They'll try and rebuild it now. Iglesias looks at a strike 0 1. There's a chopper foul down the first baseline. Iglesias had a base hit, which was actually a squeeze to not get a run. He beat the throw to first base. And that made it 3 0 back in the second for Detroit. Right back off the glove of Davis, rolling towards second. Iglesias beats it off. Midfield hit. Another one for Jose. It's number 29 in the year. I don't know if Ichiro has gotten one in the last couple of days, but they were tied at 27. Iglesias might lead the American League in infield singles with that last one. Gantz got to it as quickly as he could after it was slowed down by Davis. Now Iglesias aboard. Here is the top of the lineup. Austin Jackson is 0 for 2. Strikeout, ground out. Perfect opportunity to offer Austin Jackson to bunt for a base hit down toward third base. Mustakas is not moving well, although he's a good defender. He has a bad calf, and he's three steps in back of that third base bat. Perfect opportunity for it. Missed it inside. One and zero. Oh. Jackson now 0 for seven in the series. Davis has allowed seven hits. Both Fister and also Wade Davis have both thrown a lot of pitches. Fister had 79 through four innings. Little break low and away. Two balls, no strikes. And that was uh, the 80th pitch of the evening by Wade Davis. Now Austin waits on a 2 0. He'll take a rip. 2 to 1 on AJ. Tigers got RBI hits in the first from Fielder and Martinez. Iglesias knocked one in in the second. And the 2 1. Low three balls, one strike. Tigers have had at least one base runner in every inning so far. They had three hits in the first. They had a walk, two hits in the second, single and a walk in the third. And already now five three ball counts for Wade Davis, who has been waiting in and out of trouble all night. And he's behind Jackson here. Tigers won the first game of the series four to one before the Royals took a couple of close ones in the doubleheader yesterday. Driven back out of play. Uncanny how when these two teams beat it's typically a game separated by one or two runs three at the most. We're tied here tonight at the fourth. Those infield hits. The Glaciers tied with each other. Runner goes and it's grounded foul. 
Iglesias was on the move on that 3 2 pitch. Here's a situation if you're Iglesias, you get the best job, jump possible. If Jackson does strike out, you want to give yourself a chance of stealing the base. You needed to have a good jump with Salvador Perez, the catcher behind the plate. He can really throw. Runner goes, and it's fouled away again. Pitch is starting to pile up now for Davis. That was his 85th. For the most part, like the Tigers, didn't have to go too deep into the bullpen in the doubleheader yesterday. Verlander Alvarez pitching well for Detroit. Shields and Duffy for the Royals. Will Smith warming up. We're doing something in their bullpen. Here's the 3 2 again. Runner goes. Bouncing ball short. Only one play for Escobar. And he got him by half a step. So advance Iglesias to second with one out. And now Don Kelly will stroll in. Hey, just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game, it is brought to you by Miller Lite. Three three game here in the fourth. Kelly in the ball game a single and a walk. So he continues to really do good work against Davis. Five for eight against him. And he looks at a strike 0 and 1. Don filling in tonight for Torrey Hunter and uh, Jim Leland just basically slid him into the two spot Torrey spot in the lineup. Here's the 0 1. One ball, one strike. Broken bat roller towards second gets on the charge. Kelly is out. Iglesias goes to third. Well, with two gone, that'll bring up Miguel Cabrera. See if we get another big two out hit here for the big fella. Tigers got two out hits from Fielder and Martinez in the first. Iglesias the go ahead run at third. Miggy tonight is 0 for 2, ground out pop up. Tip into the glove, strike one on Miguel. Davis's big league career began with a start against the Tigers. 2009, he made his debut against Detroit. Here's the ball low, 1 1. Pitched well in that game, going seven, striking out nine, but got a no decision. The 1 1. Foul back out of play. Miguel would not get nearly the opportunities uh, that he has gotten this year and last year when he won the first Triple Crown in 45 years if he did not have that man right there as protection in the batting order. Here's the 1 2. Line drive. Base hit right field over the corner. Another two out run for Detroit as Cabrera lumbers into second and he is in there with a double. Tigers lead four to three. He might be the only hitter in the game today that can take a 93 mile per hour fastball that is up on the inner third of home plate and drill it down in the right field corner. His hand eye coordination is incredible. Three of the four Tigers runs tonight have come with two outs. And 
Miguel doing his best to chug into second base. First time we've seen Ned Yost leave that to seat on the bench to walk to the mound in the four games we've played here. 93 pitches into the game. Wade Davis is done. It's a wall side windows pitching change. And Will Smith will come trotting in. 4 3 Detroit. In the bottom of the fourth inning. Cavi with a double down the right field line to knock in a run with two outs. And so the Royals have gone to the bullpen. Will Smith will check in. Will Smith has only been in the seven games for the Kansas City Royals, logging 19 and a third innings, 326 ERA. Uh, he has 20 strikeouts in the 19 innings and only one base on ball. So he must like he must be like the rest of their bullpen. He must have a really good fastball. Hey, by the way, this Wednesday, the Tigers face the Minnesota Twins at 708. First 10,000 fans receive an Audubon Sanchez Mickey Lolich strikeout Kings poster. Call 866 Tiger or visit Tigers.com for more info. Will Smith facing Prince Fielder. First career appearance uh, for Smith against Detroit. Swing and a miss. I guess you could say here, Rob, this is Will Smith facing the Fresh Prince. You got that right. You got that right. Prince had a double to knock in a run back in the first. Trying to knock in another one here with two outs. And sails outside. One ball, one strike. Usually it's the little left-hander Tim Collins that trots out of that to Kansas City bullpen to face Prince Fielder, but Ned Yost is saving him for a little bit later in the game to go up against Prince. Too early for Tim Collins. Here's the 1-1. Swing and a miss. One and two. Usually when you haven't seen a pitcher and the Tigers have never seen Smith advantage goes to the pitcher. He's made some good breaking ball pitches against the Prince Fielder. Ooh, just missed the outer edge a fastball that time two balls two strikes. Will Smith born in Noonan Georgia. Cabrera at second. After doubling in a run to break the tie. And the 2 2. Wasted one back out of play. Smith broke into the big leagues last year, appearing in 16 games as a starter for the Royals. With 6 and 9. Every pitch 
and has been away from Prince Fielder of the five he's seen from Will Smith. You know, whether it be the fastball or the breaking ball. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Prince is out of there and the inning is over. Not before the Tigers retake the lead on the double by Miggy. That was a single game American League record by fanning nine straight batters on September 27, 2012, versus Kansas City. Previous record in the American League, eight straight strikeouts held by California's Nolan Ryan. He did it on July 9, 1972, and he did it August 7, 1973. What a day that was for Doug Fister. Nine. Strikeouts in a row. It was memorable indeed. And now Fister goes back to the mound, leading this one by a score of four to three. As we go to the fifth inning, and in four innings, Fister has allowed eight hits, three runs. Alex Gordon leads it off, then Salvador Perez and Mike Bastakis in the KC fifth. Bouncing in, one ball, one strike. Four runs, eight hits, one error for Detroit. KC, three runs, eight hits, no errors. Gordon singled in a run in the third. Fisker gave up a one out walk and then three consecutive hits. Two and one. For Doug Fisker throwing so many first pitch strikes, uh, his uh, pitch count is way up. That's a good point. You don't normally see it this high. Even though he's able to get ahead of these Kansas City Royals, they are grinding out some at bats. Foul away. 3 2. Well, this is Fister's. Typically, this is his time of the year after the All Star break. He is so good following the break since 2011, 19 and 8. And his ERA is about two and a half. 3 2 pitch is in there. Strike three. Gordon is caught looking. One gone. Will be the third strikeout of the game for Fister. That'll bring up Salvador Perez. Ball one outside. Jim Leland has been ejected from this game, as has been Brian Pena for arguing a play that uh, clearly should have been overturned. There's a strike call. Ball was thrown in the dirt, clearly hit the bat of Alcides Escobar with the runner at first base. It was a foul ball, but they didn't rule it that way. So Gene Lamont taking over now. One ball, two strikes. This is uh, Gene Lamont's first year as the bench coach, although technically he's been the bench coach for Jim since Jim's been here. 
uh, in 2000, 2006. And but uh, Gino was the third base coach before this year. And when Jim would get kicked out of a game, he would hand the lineup card over to Lloyd McClendon. Gino knows what he's doing. Former manager of the year in the American League in his days with the White Sox. He nearly got that Boston Red Sox job a year ago that went to Bobby Valentine. Good breaking ball. Got him looking. Perez. See you later. A couple of strikeouts for Fisker. He's had a good curveball all evening. It's the pitch that he worked on in his last bullpen session because he did not have a good curveball the last time he went out there. He was bouncing a lot of breaking balls in Chicago. But today that pitch has been really good for Doug. Here is Mike Mustakis. Fisker got a huge double play to end the fourth, and he had to settle for one run, did the Royals. He's really been pitching in stress all evening. He is at 91. Here comes number 92. Two and another count. Bonifacio would bat next should Mustakis reach. He is one for two tonight. That's in for a strike. Two and one on Mike Mustakis. Mustakis a little upset with himself. He took that 2 0 fastball. Pop up. Shallow center going to drop. Not a whole lot you can do about that. A bloop single to center with two outs. That will be the ninth hit now for the Royals. And it keeps things going for Bonifacio. Average of 215 right now with his 0 for 2 tonight. Foul straight back, had a rip, 0 and 1. Bonifacio went over to the Blue Jays in that big offseason deal that uh, involves so many big time talents. Jose Reyes, Mark Burley, part of that deal. Marlins got a lot of good young players in return, including a shortstop out of the Blue Jays system that is now playing short for the Marlins. Echeverria. They say he is lights out. Marlins certainly are rebuilding with a good young pitching staff. The 1 1 is ripped to right field. That's going to get down. Base hit. Kelly over to play it. Mustakis will get to third base, clearly not running all that well, and he makes it standing up. So clearly, uh, Bonifacio playing a whole lot better for his new club than he played for the Toronto Blue Jays. Got a change up up in the zone and hit the ball very hard to right field. Mustak is not running well, but he's able to get over to third base. Bonifacio, on the other hand, he can fly. He's coasting in the second base. Two out chance for Chris Getz, and he takes strike one. We talked about this at the top of the show today, just how difficult it has been for the Tigers to beat the Kansas City Royals. They really don't have any issues with any other team in the American League Central but the Kansas City Royals. Slapped in the air to center. Should get him out of the inning. Jackson is back. Inning is over. No runs. A hit to left. Tigers baseball presented by Bell Tire.
Back in the fourth inning, if you weren't with us, uh, Jim Leland was kicked out of the game. Escobar was in the batter's box, and he made contact with the ball that was down in the dirt. It got through Pena's legs. Pena just let it go. And then later on, Escobar would double down in the left field corner to drive in a run. Jim Leland was kicked out of the game. Brian Pena also ejected from the game. And Gene Lamont is now your acting manager. And the Tigers are holding on to a 4 to 3 lead on a gorgeous night here at the ballpark. Another packed house here in the Motor City. Tigers lead it 4 to 3. They'll come to the plate here in the bottom of the fifth, and they are facing Will Smith, the lefty. Victor Martinez leads it off and fouls it off. Martinez and then Dirks and then Infante. Four runs, eight hits for the Tigers. Three runs on ten hits for visiting KC. Smith taking over for the starter Wade Davis back in the fourth and struck out fielder with a runner in scoring position. Now he'll start a clean inning here in the fifth. Ball outside one ball and one strike. Talked about how impressive this KC bullpen has been. They, uh, they were impressive again yesterday. Bullpen ERA 271 coming into play tonight for KC. Bouncing ball second base side and gets that and played perfectly. First out of the fifth. Here is our Comerica Bank game summary and Cabrera and Fielder each with RBI doubles. I'll see this Escobar has knocked in a run and Doug Fister has thrown a lot of pitches in this ball game through five innings. He's given up three runs, ten hits. Doug has thrown 99 to be exact. Here's Sandy Dirks. Swing and a miss, 0 and 1. 0 for 1 tonight for Dirks, a walk in his last at bat. Now they go one pitch. And sails a little high, one ball, one strike. Dirk set a four hit game in the first game in the series. Now four for nine in the set. And he rolls one toward first foul. And he came in 373 career against Royals pitching. Of course, Andy not too far from KC, He's from Hutchinson, Kansas. One two sails outside two balls two strikes every time the uh, Tigers go to Kansas City uh, Andy Dirks fills up that pass list with a lot of family members and friends and he puts on a pretty good show for him. Here's a two two. Yeah, he certainly does went to Wichita State. Junior College in uh, Hutchinson or, I'm sorry Community College in Hutchinson Kansas. I guess they don't call it junior college anymore. Community College. Community College now. The 2 2 swing and a miss. He got him. So Smith has retired three batters. And he has struck out the two lefties he has faced. Well, you can see why he has averaged a strikeout in inning since coming to the big leagues. He got Prince with that same breaking ball. Here is Omar Infante. Ground ball to third, right at Mustakas. Throws high, but Hosmer pulls it in, and it's a one-two-three inning for Smith. He's retired all four that he has faced. Had a beautiful night in downtown. It is hopping here in the Motor City this evening.
by Arby's. Try Arby's Grand Turkey Club today. Arby's slicing up freshness. And by Bell Tire. Get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. Packed house here in downtown Detroit. The Tigers Royals get together in game four in this five game series. Tigers with a four to three lead as we go to the sixth. Alcides Escobar will lead things off. And then it's David Lowe and Eric Hosmer. And Fisker drops in a breaking ball strike 0 and 1. Escobar doubled in a run back in the fourth inning. At that time tying the game at three. Doug ready with the 0 1 pitch. Sails outside one ball one strike. A two base hit by Escobar also snapped an 0 for 17 slump. We talked earlier about how he has been really streaky this year after a good stretch leading up to the all star break. He was four for 40 coming out of the break. One and two. Back out of play. One two the count stays. Last time Escobar was up, uh, Fister threw him one too many breaking balls. And finally he went down the bottom of the zone and hit a double down that left field corner to drive in a run. Drew Smiley warming up in the Detroit bullpen. Tiger bullpen in pretty good shape tonight. One two. Here is our Xfinity high speed pitch of the evening thrown by Doug Fister. Top fastball 92 as far as the velocity is concerned and 71 miles an hour with a curveball. Swing and a miss. Fister now has five punch outs in this game. That curveball right there out of the hand of Doug Fister. 73 miles an hour to get Escobar out in front. It's a nice look at it right there. Right off the fingertips. Top of the order now, David Lowe. One for three in this game. Strike one to Lowe. Royals have 10 hits tonight. Fister now at 106 total pitches. Foul tip into the glove of Holiday, 0 and 2. 116, the most pitches that Fister has thrown this year in a game. Actually did that in back to back starts. Hosmer lurking. That was back in May and then early June. Jim's been very consistent in that regard. He kind of turns guys loose early in the season, kind of lets them go 115, 120 on occasion, but by the time they get into August and September, he kind of likes to stay right around 100 pitches for all of his starters, with the exception of Justin Verland. Two and two on low. Make sure the starters stay fresh. They get their work in, but you also get your bullpen uh, prepared to get ready for postseason play. Bouncing ball right side, and Fonte gobbles it up. Spinning throw for the out. Two gone. Omar still not 100%, but still real good range at the second base position, turning and firing to Prince Fielder. Omar said when he came back off the disabled list when the club was in Chicago that a little less than 100%, but if he continues to play, the ankle's only going to get stronger. It won't get any worse. Ball inside to Hosmer. Been on base three times tonight. Single two walks. The 1 0. Well, the Tigers clearly are a better team with Infante in their lineup offensively, and of course, he has done a marvelous job with the glove as well. Here's the 2 0 pitch. 2 1. Hosmer scoring a run after starting a rally with a walk in the third. Big rip there. Two and two. Doug averages 103 
point eight, so nearly 104 points. There are 104 pitches per start. Hit 114 tonight. Now the 2-2. Two -two. He got him strike three. Osborne didn't like it. Oh well. One, two, three innings, six strikeouts for Doug Fister. On our way to the bottom of the six. And who are the only three Michigan born active players to have at least 100 career hits? You are looking at one of them, Grosse Point South graduate Chris Getz. And you got Nate McLeod, who's out of Muskegon. Casper Wells was actually born in Grand Rapids. So he's on that list, former Tiger. There are your three. You might be thinking Derek Jeter. Although he grew up in Kalamazoo, he was born in New Jersey. So he did not make our list. And he's got far more than 100. Here's Brian Holiday getting his first at bat after taking over for the ejected Brian Pena. Well, Smith is still out there. He's done good work for KC out of their bullpen. Here's the 0 2 to Holiday. It is outside, one ball, two strikes. Checked it low and inside. Two balls, two strikes. Because of the holiday, excuse me, because of the Pena ejection, and the Tigers will not be able to pinch hit for Kelly, nor will they be able to pinch hit for Holiday. Obviously, there's not another catcher, but they can't do anything with Kelly either should they choose to pinch hit later in the game. Osborne, nice play, Smith covering. And the reason I say that, Kelly would be their third catcher should have something happen to Holiday. <laughs> Is Jose Iglesias. A couple of hits for Iglesias. One of them was a uh, squeeze play, and he beat it out for an infield hit. Got an RBI as well. 23 driven in for Jose. A couple of infield hits tonight. Trying to get something started here in the sixth. In there for strike one. Showing bunt. A little pull Mustakas into third base. One ball, one strike. Now he backs up. Two and one the count. 
Iglesias now batting 313. Two and two. Well, Jose was in an 0 for 13 stretch before that uh, squeeze play resulted in a hit and an RBI back in the second. Lifted back out of play. Look at all the room here in left center field, and with the shallow play of their defenders, if Iglesias hits something on the line and it happens to get to the wall, we might see an inside the park home run. I'd be up for that. Sign me up. Here's the 2 2. Got him, strike three. It's a third strikeout for Will Smith, who has retired all six that he has faced since coming out. Here's Austin Jackson. Talk about uh, the hard throwers they have in their bullpen. The guys at the back end, like Holland and Herrera and Crow and Collins. Collins. Smith has come on and done a really good job. You know who else has been good in that bullpen for them this year? Hoche. Hoche, yeah. Pitched yesterday. Throwing 94, 95, 96. He's a former starter, so he's got three other pitches curve, slider, change up. Ball two to Jackson. Lewis Coleman is beginning to loosen. Ball high, 3 0. Smith is going to have to grow some facial hair if he's going to stay in that Kansas City Royals bullpen because everybody else down in that bullpen has some type of a beard or Fu Manchu or something. There is a walk that'll give the Tigers a two out base runner. Let's go back. For a game break now and check in with Trevor Thompson. All right, Trev, here's what it looks like in the Central six game spread between the Tigers and the Indians. Six and a half for KC. That's what makes these games for the Royals so critical. A five game series. Yes, it gives them a chance to get back into it, but it also gave the Tigers a chance to bury them a bit. We have a couple of more series this year against the Royals. One here and then one in Kansas City. That has popped up. Third base side, Mustakis appears to have room, and he does. Inning is over. No runs. Two out walk. He's stranded. Let's go to the seventh. Starts and uh, he's found that curveball here today. Six strikeouts, the majority of the strikeouts have come on that bender. It's an outstanding pitch for Doug. And when he's not 
getting strikeouts with that pitch is that swing back fastball that the left-handers give up on, and it catches the inner third of home plate, given strike three a couple of times here tonight by Mike Mulinski, the home plate umpire. So Doug Fister, 115 pitches into this game, is just one shy of his season high. 120 is his career high as Billy Butler leads it off. He did that last August against the Minnesota Twinkies. This grounded foul, one ball, one strike. We have a new second baseman, Defonte's out of the game. Santiago has taken over his second. Ground ball to short. Iglesias to his left. And Butler is out of there, one gone. Another ground ball out for Fister. And Iglesias gets over there, gets in front of it, watches it into the glove, and plenty of time to throw Billy Butler out. Gene Lamont comes and takes the baseball. That's going to be it for Fister. It's a wall side windows pitching change. Doug gets a nice round of applause, and we'll be back. To Alex Gordon here, and these two have a little bit of a history. Uh, Alex Gordon, one for nine in his career against uh, Drew Smiley with five strikeouts, and he's happened three times this year July 20th, July 21st, the last couple of times he's gotten Gordon to hit weak ground balls to the right side of the infield. One for nine with five strikeouts for Gordon against Smiley. And a ball high, 1 and 0. Oh. Tigers on top, 4 3. The numbers on Drew so far this year. And the 65 innings out of the bullpen, second among American League relievers. Whip under 1. 67 strikeouts, that's sixth in the American League. So Drew has had a great year. Wave and a miss, two and one. That's a situation right there. If you're Alex Gordon, you know you're going to get a fastball, and you commit way too soon, and you swing at a ball uh, that's up around the neck. Here's the two one. Three and one. That was close. Gordon in the ball game tonight has an RBI single. That's exactly how close that one was. Just a shade off the plate. Grounded foul. A broken bat, it appears. Three and two.
Fister goes 118 pitches, the most he has thrown in a game this year. Smiley is in now, and Rondone is warming up in the Detroit bullpen. Swing and a miss. He tipped it into the glove of Holiday. Two gone. Seven strikeouts for Tigers pitching tonight. That makes Gordon now one for ten in his big league career against Drew Smiley with six punch outs. Not real good, is it? That's not good. <laughs> Two outs. Here's Perez. Salvador tonight, an RBI single. That was way back in the third when the uh, Royals got a couple of runs. Ooh, man, the deal. Perez has two hits in 11 at bats in this series. Smiley trying to get this thing to the bottom of the seventh with the Tigers lead. And it's fouled off. One, two. These two have yet to meet. This is their first career meeting. When the All Star game was played in New York uh, earlier in July, it was Salvador Perez that had a chance to catch Mariano Rivera and Mariano Rivera's final All Star appearance. Talk about a thrill. I'm sure that is uh, something he will share with his kids and his grandkids, especially when Mariano goes into the Hall of Fame. Smiley with the 0 2. Ball high. Well, that All Star game could turn out to be big because the American League won, which gives the AL home field advantage in the World Series. Jimmy Carroll has moved to the on deck circle. The 1 2 pulled foul. Sellout crowd here tonight of 41,850, which is the 26th sellout the Tigers have had this year. They are standing at the ballpark tonight. And they've watched a good one so far. High drive, deep left field, way back down the line, and gone. It's a home run to tie this ball game up at four. Perez with a two out solo shot. His fifth home run of the season. And Drew Smiley able to get ahead of Perez. No balls in two strikes before throwing him a breaking ball that's down and in. And, and Perez with a tremendous amount of power. Hits it out to the left. He just kept it fair. And Fister will get a no decision tonight. 4-4 game. 11th hit now for KC. That is in for a strike. 0-1 on Jamie Carroll. He is batting for Mustakas. One ball, one strike. Carroll over three in the series. He sends a high fly ball to the left field. Dirks is on the move. Going back to the track in front of the wall to make the catch. Getting over. Royals tied up. Perez solo shot. Mister no decision.
We go to the bottom of the seventh inning here at the ballpark and this Monday joined Detroit Tigers all-star third baseman Miguel Cabrera along with his friends and teammates for a one of a kind evening under the lights at Comerica Park. Celebrate with members of the 2013 Detroit Tigers as we raise money to keep kids in the game for tickets call 313 471 2113 and so it'll be Cabrera here to lead things off in the bottom of the seventh. Brand new ball game again as Miggy fouls one back out of play on one. Miggy loves to swing at the first pitch, but you really can't fault him. He's had so much success uh, when he has swung at the first pitch this year. He's done a lot of damage. Here's the 0 1. Ground ball to second, and right there is Getz to gobble it up. Miggy is gone one away. Will Smith is coming to this game and really quieted down these Tigers' bats. Jamie Carroll stays in the game to play third base. He has retired eight of nine, has Will Smith. Now Fielder who doubled in a run way back in the first. Tiger box score tonight. They've had eight hits in this game. Fielder now with. 84 RBIs this year. 18 home runs. Two and all the count. Fielder was the first guy that Smith came in to face. The Tigers had gotten a double from Cabrera. That broke the tie at that point, and then Smith came in to strike him out. And that is in there two and one. Detroit here is Martinez. Ooh, look out, he whistles that one back in the seats on one. Prince Fielder's got lightning quick hands. Lightning quick hands. That's a breaking ball right there at the top of the zone, and look at the concentration. And he hits it out of here on the line. He was wishing happy birthday to somebody. On that last shot we took of him. Says, get out, and it does. Five four in favor of Detroit. They have taken the lead on the home run by Prince Fielder. Glaciers, how do you hit it that far and that hard? How do you hit a ball 400 feet on the line? Well, the one that Prince hit the other night was uh, one of those high towering home runs. Ned Yost has seen that a lot though. He was Prince's first manager in Milwaukee for a number of years and Prince did a lot of damage uh, while Ned Yost was his manager. That is a fair ball inside the bag at first. Martinez is going to hold up. Second time around uh, guys getting a better look at Smith when he came into the contest here uh, back in the fifth inning. It was the first time any of the Tigers had ever seen him. Uh, he went through their lineup one time but then second time around Prince Fielder with a homer, Victor Martinez with a single down the right field line. Today's the 17th, right? Today is the 17th. It is Jaden's birthday. Jaden's birthday. That's what Daddy was doing. There you go. Daddies are like that. Birthday. I'm gonna hit you a home run. 
How about that? Prince goes deep on Jaden's birthday. Happy birthday, Jaden. He torched it. So the Tigers have a man on now. It's good to see him smile. And Dirks looks at a ball outside. Fielder, two hits, two RBIs, two extra base hits tonight. We've talked about Prince Fielder quite often in the fact that as a left handed batter, very few can climb the ladder the way that he can climb the ladder, hit fastballs and breaking balls. Most left handers like the ball down. He's kind of illustrating exactly what he did on that home run. Strong top hand. I would assume the stitching came loose on that home run. Here's one more look at it. Hanging breaking ball top of the zone and that concentration in the strong top hand allows him to have that lightning quick swing. Here's the 3-0 and it's a ball four to Andy Dirks. Three straight have reached now after Smith was in cruise control mode. Ned Yost says, get me someone else. Santiago do up. Kelvin Herrera has been warming up. And so he will enter the ball game as Smith is done. His night is over. Tigers lead 5 4. We'll be back. Lead as we play here in the seventh inning at Comerica Park, and we remind you to swing for the fences at Comerica during Tigers fantasy batting practice August 23rd. And hit pitches thrown by former Tigers pitcher Dave Rosma. Call 313 471 2550 or check it out online at tigers.com. Prince Fielder, the man of the hour, right now with his go ahead home run, but the Tigers have their sights set on more as. Kelvin Herrera comes in now. He's got a big arm. And there's some proof of that when you look down at that bottom category. 56 strikeouts, 19 walks, and only 44 innings pitched for Herrera. Fastball goes from 97 to 100 miles an hour. Also, nice curveball and a changeup. Santiago's first at bat of the game after taking over defensively for Infante. And Ramon takes it outside. Santiago went deep yesterday. Still having fun on the bench right now. Yes, they are. Ramon's home run in game one was the only Tigers run. A powerful duo right there. Best in the game. 
And here's uh, Ramon Santiago's home run yesterday. Pinch hit home run. First pinch hit career home run for Santiago against Aaron Crow. Breaking ball down and in. And nice swing applied by Santiago. And it carried to the third row in right field. Strike call two and one now on Santiago. Each team now with double digit hits. Tigers have 10. More than likely, Santiago is not going to pull the fastball coming out of Herrera's hands. And if that's the case, and Tom Brookins knows anything hit to left, Victor's not going to score. Two balls, two strikes. Not with the arm of Alex Gordon out there. Anywhere else, he's got a shot. Not to left. Holiday waiting on deck. They are still talking about that home run. It should be. Foul away. Just amazing. I know we've had a chance to see these guys play together now for a couple of years, but sometimes you take it for granted how special it is to watch these guys play. Their skill set is amazing. Great hand eye coordination for a couple of big body guys to hit lots of home runs. Miguel hits 350, 360. Swing and a miss. Santiago is out on strikes. Prince Fielder hit 300 last year for the very first time in his career, and he's only him and a handful of guys, Joe Maurer being one, that walked more than they struck out last year. So that's extraordinary for a guy that big that hits with that much power that he walked last year more than he struck out. Extremely unusual. That pair does unusual things. Here's Holiday now trying to drive in a run here with two outs. In there for strike one, 98 again from Kelvin Herrera. Each team getting a run here in the seventh inning. The Tigers answer the Perez homer with one of their own. Prince goes deep in the bottom of the seventh. Lifted in the air, center field, not deep. And Bonifacio will make the catch to end the inning. So the Tigers take the lead as Prince Fielder homers for his son Jaden on his birthday. Happy birthday, Jaden. Tigers trying to overcome the ejections of their manager and their catcher tonight and they have taken a five to four lead as we go to the top of the eighth inning the home run by Prince Fielder is the difference right now Tigers have ten hits Royals have eleven very entertaining ball game tonight in front of a sellout crowd but right now the Prince is 
man of the hour and the Tigers will go back to the bullpen now Jose Veras will take over for Detroit although Jim has not said as much it appears that Veras is his eighth inning guy setting up for Joaquin Benoit he has gotten the ball several of the Tigers wins lately when they've been sizzling hot the last a month or so he had 19 saves for the Houston Astros uh, before coming over to the Tigers this year and he did not have the command issues this year in Houston nor has he had him here in Detroit that he had prior in his career. So it's Veras job now as Gino looks over the uh, lineup card again he has taken over Jim Leland ejected from that incident earlier in the game when a ball hit the bat of the uh, shortstop Escobar they ruled that it didn't and Leland came out argued was ejected. Bonifacio is a really good bunner there for Miguel Cabrera down at third base about six seven steps in uh, from that third base bag. Bottom three in the lineup Bonifacio looks at a strike. He has a double in this game one for three. And he slaps one foul down the third baseline. That is a thing of beauty for left handers that do have the ability to run that draw the third baseman in if you can master the art of slapping that ball right past them. You can get yourself a lot of hits during the course of a season. Well, with two strikes in the count now Cabrera backs up. Oh and two Ferris taking over here in the eighth inning. Popped up back out of play. Smiley pitched in the seventh and now Veras here in the eighth. Fister threw a season high 118 pitches tonight. Chris Getz lurking on deck. Bouncing ball back up the middle and into center field base hit. Bonifacio taking a very aggressive turn. Lead off man on. One more game to go in this series. Here is the upcoming pitching matchup presented by the Michigan Office of Highway Safety Planning. And tomorrow we've got Bruce Chen and Max Scherzer. First uh, couple of times we saw the Kansas City Royals this year, Bruce Chen was pitching out of their bullpen. And but he overall he is five and oh with a very good earn run average this season of course uh, Matt Scherzer he's been one of the best pitchers in all of baseball looking for win number 18. 22 and one combined. Here's a bunt by Getz foul surprise Getz bunting without allowing Bonifacio to try to steal a base here first. Yeah then you get him to third with a bunt. And Bonifacio has already stolen a couple of bases in the series. And he's fearless. Three stolen bases for Bonifacio since coming over from Toronto, which gives him 15 for the year. And gets gets time out. Bonifacio in the two stolen bases we've seen him steal in this series. When he takes that first step, he is running full speed. And Averis will do all he can to make sure that Bonifacio does not get comfy down there at first. As a matter of back, a matter of fact, in last night's game, Bonifacio was on first base late. Jim Leland pitched out. He didn't run on that particular pitch, and but then he took off on the very next pitch, and Pena had no shot at throwing him out. Runners four for four against. Varus stolen base attempts this year. Well, you wonder if Gene Lamont might call for another pitch out here. I think they're convinced that uh, Bonifacio is going to try to steal second. There he goes. Swing and a miss. Holiday's throw. Bouncing into center field. Bonifacio is up. 
he will get to third. Bonifacio didn't even have a good jump there in Pena. Excuse me, Holiday had a shot at throwing him out. Uh, had he not bounced the ball and it gotten underneath the glove of Glacius, they may have gotten it. Well, there's no doubt. But look how quick he gets to his feet. He reads the ball in the center field, he jumps to his feet, and now he's over at third base. Well, Holiday knew he had him too. He did not get a good jump that time. Stolen base E2, tying run at third now with nobody out infield coming in. That is one reason why the Kansas City Royals play the Tigers so tough this year. That speed. Royals hoping it has made a difference here in the eighth after the Tigers took the lead. Bonifacio is at third with nobody out. Tigers hoping to cut that run down. And the one two. Lifted to center. That'll get the drive. They run in a drive to center. Knocks him in a single by Getz. RBI to make it 5 5. And back into the Tigers bullpen. Unable to do what the Kansas City Royals bullpen has been able to do in this series when they've been given a lead late. They've been able to shut the Tigers down. That is Varus's best pitch, but a real short swing by Getz. And it delivers a single in the shallow center field. Now you have to worry about yep. Getz still at second base. Sure do. He's 11 of 13. This is the most athletic team uh, in the American League. We don't see all the National League clubs, but American League teams, there is none as athletic as this one. Escobar showing bunts. Tigers have committed two errors in this game. The throwing error here by Holiday has proved to be costly. Escobar doubled in a run back in the fourth. Pop that bunt back to the screen. One ball, one strike. Eighty five percent this year for Getz. Eight sack bunts already this season for Escobar. Royals got one in the seventh tied up, fell behind. Now one in the eighth to tie it up again. They have 13 hits in this contest. Go ahead, run standing at first base in the speedy Chris Getz. Now the 1 1 runner goes and a ground ball to second and through out of the reach of the second baseman Santiago. I don't know what happened there. It looked like Santiago was going over to make the play, then all of a sudden he just kind of stopped. And I don't know if it was a base runner that blocked his view or not, but. Take a look at Santiago. Looked like he was going to make the play. Then all of a sudden he has to go back to the left to dive. The ball gets in the right field. And with the speed of Getz, he gets to. He took two. He took one step to the right, got back to the left, and couldn't get it. Well, his initial momentum was the correct call. Moving to his left, but then he just stopped. And now here is David Lowe with runners at first and third. Nobody out. Royals again now trying to take the lead with the infield in. And there goes the runner to second. A one hop throw is smothered by Iglesias and a steal for Escobar. Like a track meet. Yeah, they're not, uh, they're not holding back here in the eighth. That is the seventh steal of the series so far by the Kansas City Royals against Tigers. I'm surprised that uh, Holiday threw that ball down to second base with the infield playing where it was playing. Yeah, me too. And fortunately, the Glacius was able to smother it, and now Holiday going out to the mound to have a talk with Veras. Escobar now 15 of 15 this season in steal and steal attempts. He has not been thrown out.
Orioles have a chance to score a couple here with a base hit. Got the top of their lineup up there, David Lowe. 14 hits for KC tonight. Ferris has allowed three consecutive hits. The 1 0. Popped him up. Ooh, this will be a big out. And Cabrera makes the play, one gone. Something off speed that got low out in front and he popped it straight up. Miguel Cabrera came in from the third base position to make the play. So that's a huge out, one away. But now here comes Eric Hosmer. First base open. He'll get a free pass and he will not hit. Rondon is warming up in the bullpen. There's ball two missing outside. Be very easy for uh, the Tigers to go to the bullpen to bring in Rondon, a strikeout artist that throws 100 miles an hour. But Billy Butler has had very little success against Jose Bears. He's 0 for 3 with two punch outs. Let's see how the Tigers want to play it here. If indeed they'll be going for the strikeout and bring Rondon in. Here's an intentional walk to Hosmer. And G. Lamont on the bottom step of the dugout. Here's they'll stay with Ferris against Butler. Bases loaded and one out for the Royals. They've tied it up here in the eighth. 5 5. Single and four at bats, but Butler's also knocked into a double play. Holiday saving a run there, smothering that one, gets back to third. Real nice block by Holiday when you call for the breaking ball. You first have to anticipate it's going to be in the dirt, and therefore you can get over in the left hander's batter's box and smother it. Holiday using that same fingernail polish that Brian Pena uses. Here's the 1 0. Driven to right field. That ball is slicing toward the corner. Kelly is on the run, but it goes foul. Billy Butler is such a professional hitter. He was simply trying to hit a ball deep enough to right field, which would allow Getz to come home via the sacrifice fly. If you're fair, is the pitch to get the double play on might be the two seamer at the bottom of the zone. If you hang that breaking ball, Billy Butler's going to hit it hard somewhere. You see a spray chart. He hits the ball all over the ballpark. Harris with the 1 1. Missed it high and outside. Two balls and one strike on Billy Butler. Who right now has 61 RBIs. The guy on deck, Gordon, is their team leader with 63. Here's the 2 1. There's a soft line drive caught by Miggy. And the runners have to hold. Two gone. Boy, if the Tigers can get out of this, they have one more out to get. Alex Gordon is one for four. He has struck out his last two times up. And he looks at ball one outside. Let's see what Gordon has done against Veras in his career. Not much history there, 0 for 2. Gordon up there sitting on an off speed pitch. He knows how the Tigers have pitched him all season long, and they've been very successful against him.
Ground ball, first base side. Prince knocks it down. Veras covers and the inning is over. The Royals will get one, but it could have been a whole lot worse. And Prince is on the field right now. And he is hurt. That ball came up and drilled fielder, but Prince going to get to his feet and hobble off. To a standing O. Done it all tonight. Now tied at five. Team there with the bases loaded. Yeah, this one jumped up and bit him. He still finished the play though. That he did. And it was a big, big out. As Varus covering. To end the threat, they leave him loaded. They get a run though. Big fella still trying to catch his breath. So we'll try and get another run here. The Tigers back in a tie 5-5. Five, five. It'll be Iglesias to lead it off in the bottom of the eighth. Then Jackson, then Kelly. Ground ball, base hit left field. We were just talking about that situation, and when you're known as a guy that can bunt for a base hit, that third baseman's going to be drawn in. And if you could master the art of either turning on something or slapping it by him, you can get yourself a lot of hits as Iglesias did right here. That's about a hundred mile power fastball turned on by Iglesias. Third hit of the night for Jose. Go ahead, run is on now. Iglesias, as we mentioned, has not run much this year. He's got Carroll in tight at third base. Jackson up there showing bunt, leaves it down foul. And Salvador Perez is a guy that you really don't want to run on anyway. And he might have the best arm of any of the American League catchers. He can flat out throw. He is clocked regularly from his hand to the second base bag of the glove of the shortstop or the second baseman at about 180. Two is good. Another bunt. This one's popped up foul, and Jackson unable to lay it down. So tough to bunt a guy that's throwing 98, 99 miles an hour. But you got a job to do. Five five game bottom of the eighth. Calvin Herrera came on in the seventh inning after two men were on. He struck out Santiago and got the fly ball from Holiday. Line drive to right field, but it's straight at David Lowe. One gone. Bring up Don Kelly. 
Getting some activity in both bullpens right now. Collins, the little lefty, is warming up in the KC pen. He's getting ready for Prince Fielder. Meanwhile, the Tigers go ahead and take the lead here. Prince or, uh, Benoit is warming up. Well, Kelly might have to do it. They might just walk Miguel Cabrera and bring in Collins to go after Prince Fielder. Strike one. Kelly has been on base in this game twice. Single walk, run scored. Herrera ready with the 0 1, instead goes back to first base. One for three with a homer off, Kelvin. Missed it outside. One ball, one strike. Herrera pitched a perfect seventh inning yesterday in relief of Danny Duffy in game one. There is Cabrera waiting on deck. Ball outside. This is the third stint this year with the Royals for Herrera. He's called back up in mid July for the third time. Runner goes and it's fouled off. Two balls, two strikes. Good call there by Gene Lamont to hit and run in the 2 1 count. Kelly just couldn't put it in fair territory. That 25 hits in this game, 14 for the visitors, 11 for Detroit. 5 5 game, we're in the bottom of the eighth. That last foul tip shook up Salvador Perez a little bit. Slice to third. Nice pick there by Carroll. The second one and the relay is a double play. What a play by Jamie Carroll. A bullet one hopper to end the inning. 5 4 3 double play. Let's go to the ninth. Just look at the standings, the wild card standing, Oakland and Tampa, and then you've got Baltimore four back. KC is five back of the wild card right now. 
here we are tied up as we go now to the ninth inning and the Tigers bring in Joaquin Benoit. And Tigers going to their closer, Joaquin, here, hoping that he can shut them down. His team can win it in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Joaquin has a fastball that will get all the way up to 95, 96. Also features a slider. Best pitch might be that real good changeup, and that he's not afraid to throw the right hand batters. Salvador Perez leading it off as we go to the ninth. And Perez looks at a strike. By the way, we got word on uh, why Omar Infante was taken out of the game. Lower back stiffness. That's why Santiago came in a couple of innings ago. Paul Tippett home plate, no balls and two strikes. Salvador Perez homered his last time up. That came off of the left-hander, Drew Smiley. That was a breaking ball that was down and in that looked like it was a ball. Yeah, but somehow Salvador got to it and hit it into the left field seats. Perez hitting his fifth home run of this season. Here's the 0 2. Just missed. One ball, two strikes. Perez, then Carroll, and then Bonifacio. Now the one, two. Two and two on Salvador Perez. Homer single, two RBIs tonight. Two of the 14 Royals hits in this game. Jamie Carroll waiting on deck. And the uh, two teams have also combined to strand 20 runners in this game. Bounce again. Now the counts three and two. You don't want to walk Salvador Perez. I don't know if Ned Yost would uh, pinch run Gerard Dyson or not for him if he's able to reach, but it is an option that Ned Yost has on his bench. And yes, Dyson is another one of those guys that can really run on the Kansas City Royals 25 man roster. Always difficult decisions late in games, especially with the perhaps extra innings looming. Whether or not you want to take out one of your better offensive pieces. To try and go for the run. And there is ball four. So let's see. Lead off walk here in the ninth inning. Let's get a sneak preview of what's coming up on Tigers Live post game as we check in with Matt Shepard. All right, fellas, thank you very much. As soon as the game ends, if and when it does, our post game coverage continues with Tigers Live. We'll, of course, hear from you too. We'll hear from Trevor and Craig Monroe back in our studios. We'll talk with Jim Leland and players as well. Guys, we shouldn't be surprised that this one is tight, right? 16 of the last 29 decided by a run. Fellas, back to you. Yeah, not at all, Shep. I mean, this is just what these two teams do. They play tight ball games. They've got another one tonight, 5 5 score. Jamie Carroll can really handle the bat. He'll be trying to bunt something down toward first base. Prince Fielder. Prince Fielder has the responsibility of holding on the base runner, uh, Salvador Perez, whereas on the other side of the diamond, no responsibility for Miguel. Perez, the go ahead runner at first base. And it's bunted down the first base line. Prince will toss to Santiago. The sacrifice works, and Carroll, since coming out of this game, has done some good work. That is one of the reasons why they acquired uh, Jamie Carroll, who will get a lot of high fives once he gets back to that dugout. He can play all the infield positions, he can play outfield. He doesn't strike out very often. He'll get a bunt down for you. Made a fine defensive play. Now they go ahead, run in scoring position. It's Bonifacio. Two out of four for Bonifacio. Single double. Stolen base. Run scored as well.
tap foul at home plate on one. A little bit of uh, background between these two against Benoit one for four for Bonifacio. Benoit trying to keep this thing tied because when we get to the bottom of the ninth it's three four and five due up for Detroit. But Perez right now the go ahead runner at second. Here's the 01 and steady bluffs back to second. Waiting on deck, Chris Getz. Joaquin paying way too much attention to Salvador Perez. Perez does not run, let alone steal bases. No balls, one strike. They'll get back in the seats. 0 and 2 on Bonifacio. There have been a lot of foul balls that have been whistled right into the stands here this evening. Boy, you got to be on high alert when you sit down close to the action. Especially when you consider there aren't too many empty seats tonight. Another sellout here at the ballpark. The 26th of the year, more than 41,000 fans. Almost 42,000 to be exact. 41,850. 0 2 on Emilio Bonifacio. Lead off walk by Perez. He was sacrificed to second. Tigers just need to make sure they send these 41,000 people home happy because you know the 48,000 that are in the arena next deal next door Ford Field watching and Kenny Chesney they're going to roll out of there real happy. Meanwhile Bonifacio settling back into the box. So what you're saying is we're going to have some major traffic tonight. I think so. Take your time. 100,000 people downtown tonight. Now Benoit ready with the 0-2 and steady steps off. Matter of fact, you might want to pull that cot out that you have back here. Just <laughs> belly up here. Quick turnaround. Big, Big game, game tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. That fold-up cot in the back of the booth. Here's the 0-2. Bounce again and blocked by Holiday. If you weren't with us earlier, I told you I had a conversation with the pitching coach Jeff Jones before the game started today, talking about the base runners that the Kansas City Royals have and how they can disrupt uh, your entire pitching staff. And he says, yes, they can do that, but he doesn't worry about that as much as his guys making quality pitches. He says they're going to steal. They lead the Nat the American League in steal, so they're going to steal, and they're very successful at doing so. But when you decide to throw the ball home plate, that's where your attention needs to be 100% of your attention on that hitter. Because that's the one thing you can control. No question. And he's got uh, Bonifacio in the hole here, one and two. The chopper, that's going to go foul down the first baseline. One and two to count stays. The leadoff man, Perez, walked, sacrificed by Carroll, pushed him into scoring position. Royals have scored a run in each of the last two innings. Tigers bring their closer in here in the ninth inning in a tie game. The Tigers also know they've got Cabrera fielder Martinez. Coming up in the bottom of the ninth. Mm -hmm. 
Ground ball right side straight to Prince. That'll be the second out. Perez will walk to third base. Two gone. So it'll be up to Chris Getz, who is two for five against Benoit. Last time Joaquin came in in a non save situation, the very end of July in Washington. I beg your pardon, here at home against Washington. And he drops down a bunt, first base side, and Prince will make the tag. Oh, what a play by Prince. Getz doesn't like it. Huge play by Fielder. Ending the inning. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Cabrera Fielder Martinez coming up. Is brought to you by Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers visit ChevyDetroit.com. See why Chevy drives the Motor City. And by Wallside Windows, the official window company of Fox Sports Detroit. Well, we go to the bottom of the ninth inning, all tied at five runs apiece. Real nice play here by Prince Fielder. Not a good bunt by Getz. The idea was good. Had he gotten it towards second base, he probably would have gotten the base hit and an RBI, but he got it too close to Prince Fielder. Prince Fielder able to apply the tag, and you can see the call by Bob Davidson, the first base umpire. Good call. He clearly hit the, uh, the jersey. So here comes the middle of the Tigers lineup to face Aaron Crow. Crow served up a home run to Ramon Santiago yesterday. He's got a big arm, fastball 93 to 96. Got a nice little slider that gets up to 87, and he will throw you a changeup. He was an All Star a couple of years ago, and since 2008, Cabrera has hit 12 go-ahead or game-time homers. Ninth inning or later. And the crowd is making some noise here at the ballpark in the ninth. First pitch slider by Crow out of the strike zone by design to Miguel Cabrera, knowing that Miguel has swung a lot of first pitches this season and in this series. You don't see Miggy normally over against the pitcher, over seven. Stick around. Fouled straight back, and the count is one ball and one strike. Crow replaces Herrera. Miggy and then Prince and then Martinez. That's unless, of course, Cabrera ends it right here. Then the place will get loud. Low, two balls, one strike. If Crow decides to throw Miguel Cabrera that same breaking ball that he swung and fouled back two pitches ago, and then Miggy's going to find a gap somewhere. Their outfield playing very deep, no coverage depth. Here's the 2 1. Way outside, 3 and 1. The 
Look how far their uh, outfielders are playing. Benoit pitching a scoreless ninth. Now we'll see if the Tigers can win it in the bottom of the ninth. Here's the 3 1. Swing it a drive. That's 13 homers this year in the ninth or later. Game winners or game tying homers. Did you know that? I don't know that. I know we win today. We got to be ready to play tomorrow. Uh, let's take the series tomorrow. Do you like these close games with this club? This has a pennant like feel to it. It has an October like feel to it, doesn't it? I love it, man. I love it. And throwing this fan, 50,000 people, they bring a lot of energy to us. I should have seen that coming, huh? I don't see that coming. That's going to ruin my makeup. Listen to me. Um, when you see a reliever come in and you, you have a game plan when you go up to the plate, what were you looking for? Oh, right there, uh, I try to get in base. But when he goes down 3 1, I say, okay, let's swing hard and make something happen. Did this team have to step back and collect its collective breath because of the ejections early in the game in your mind? But Jim Leland and Brian Pena, because you kind of got hosed on that one play. Well, that's what I'm talking. Uh, we want to win. They fight it up. Uh, that's what we need. Fight it up, and let's go play hard. You are amazing. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Carlos, he is the best hitter on planet Earth. Back to you. And even maybe some other planets. Because this guy is not to be stopped. And the flair for the dramatic that he has had this year, Rod, is just astounding. You know, they need to find another league for this young man because he has clearly mastered this one. Just a phenomenal talent. And we promised you this earlier in the game. It is our Miller moment brought to you by Miller Light. And we don't have to go back very far. 3-1 fastball outside. Black drilled on the line to right field by the best hitter in the game. And 41,000 people go home happy. His contact to damage ratio is just simply off the chain. Opposite field home run for Miguel Cabrera. And the reaction on the bench, priceless. Like Little Leaguers, you'd think they were playing the Little League World Series. Unreal, and even the best can get shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Fielder doing the honors. 
He had a big home run as well in this ball game tonight. What a night! Cabrera caps it off. We'll be back.